So what is coming up here soon? Halloween. Halloween. I get I get dressed up like a bank robber. Pink? <laughs> yeah, in pink, yeah. I was just telling somebody that today. Uh, I get a kick out of this this scarf when I wear it. People say, "Won't you? Aren't you afraid people think you're gay?" <laughs> now I'm 53, almost 53. Beautiful wife, seven kids, nine grandkids. If I'm not securing my masculinity by now, that's it. No hope. <laughs> Truth is. I've looked at, I've done several times, I've looked at, at Halloween, and it came up, everybody says, oh, it's, it's Satan's holiday. Did you know it's Satan's holiday? No, it's actually started off as a religious holiday. They believed that the day, um, All Saints Day, which is the day after Halloween, that all, that's the day that all the spirits went up to heaven. See, so that's the one day. Everybody who had died within that year had to stay, stick around until All Saints Day, and then they went to heaven. So Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, was the night that all the spirits could get back at the people that they wanted to have something against. So everybody went out in costume. They would hide their faces so the spirits wouldn't know who they were. Because, you know, spirits are dumb like that. So, that's where Halloween started. But actually, started a little sooner than that. Genesis 2. I'm sorry, Genesis 3. Genesis 3, starting in verse 1. Genesis 3. This is what I like to see. There's people turning Bible pages. I like that. Okay, there's some people turning on telephones, but that's okay. Genesis 3 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the, any of the wild animals and the Lord God, that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from a tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it, or you will die. Lie number one opens the door for Satan. Then Satan says, You will surely not die. The serpent said to the woman, uh, For God knows that when you eat from it, from it that God knows it from you, when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, we'll stop there for a second. What makes a good lie? A little bit of truth. truth. You've got to mix in enough truth in it to where it sounds believable. For instance, everybody likes Ernest P. Worrell. Remember him? Remember he was talking about, he said, I was in the war. There was ten of us. Real men never tasted quiche. We fought all night and the sun come up. And there I was, all alone on the beach, knee deep in cigarette butts and hand grenade pins. Now I can't remember the rest of the story, but there is nothing about that that is believable. <laughs> or then there's a story that goes around, and I love this story. Um, Christmas Eve, World War II, they were entrenched, they'd been fighting all day, and at midnight, this beautiful baritone voice rang out through the night, singing Silent Night in German. And then another, and then the Americans joined in, and then they all came together and traded gifts of cigarettes and, and, and sea rats and, and things like that. Yeah, that's another one that you go, Seriously? Because anybody who's ever been in the military, know anybody in the military, watched a Rambo movie? Here's a believable scenario. They were entrenched. They'd been fighting all day. 
And it came midnight, and a beautiful baritone voice came across singing Silent Night in German. And another joined in, and the commander said, you know, that's a beautiful voice. I mean, and strong. I mean, he got some good pipes to make, what, five, six hundred meters? We need to give them something in, in for Christmas. I know. We'll call in a battalion three round and give them 27 high-explosive artillery projectiles. They'll love it. What do you think, Sergeant Major? Sergeant Major said, yeah. Uh, they'll be so they'll be so occupied with those presents that, that they won't even want to fight. And as a matter of fact, we'll send our cavalry and infantry over there afterwards to ensure they know that a return gift is not even necessary. That's a more believable scenario. But the truth is, neither one of those would happen. <laughs> Because as soon as this rascal says, silent, they would beat him into submission and say, yeah, silent, you idiot. But a little bit of truth makes a lie believable. Satan is the master at that. In 2 Corinthians, if I can turn that way, in 2 Corinthians, Paul was talking to uh, the people of Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm sorry. Chapter 11. 2 Corinthians. Paul said, I hope you'll put up with, my, uh, with a little of my foolishness, but you've already been doing that. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ so that I may present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere, pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. I'm going to skip on down a little bit to 13. He expands on this and he says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles for Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Uh, it's not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Satan is a master of of camouflage. Now in the army we'd camouflage everything we had. It seemed like everything was woodland camouflage pattern. You know what I mean? Uh, the clothes we wore, the, the, the vehicles we drove, everything had to be camouflaged. We'd stick big, few, uh, big huge nets over the top of it to, to make sure that nobody can see us. And they were, <laughs> you gotta love this, they were radar scattering nets. So when they flew over us and had their radar shining down on us, instead of seeing tanks and, and t artillery pieces, they'd see this big blank spot. Yeah, that was pretty smart. So, but it works. Trust me, I work for the government. No, but honestly, ma a master of camouflage. I mean, there's guys in the Army that do. I mean, they can hide from you, and you can step on them just about and never see them. They're really good at this stuff. Satan is the same way. He can walk right up to you and tell you so much is, I mean, this is, this is not the way it is. I hear so many people telling me this today. But see, it's not black and white. There, there's, there's this gray area. Really? So there's right, there's wrong, and there's not so bad. I didn't read that in the Bible. Has anybody read that? Anybody in the Bible? Has anybody read that there's a gray area between sin and righteousness? No. That gray area, believe it or not, is sin. And I harp on this because this is this is a pet peeve of mine. You know. 
teenage girls don't get caught up, teenage guys don't get caught up in this, this, well, we have to live together to make sure that we're compatible. No, you don't. <laughs> because if you love each other with a godly love, and your desire is to please the other, and then her desire is to please you, your desire is to please her, and you both lift each other and exalt each other in Christ, and Christ is the center of your world, guess what? You're compatible. How can you not be? If God made you for Him and Him for you, how are you not compatible? That is one of those gray areas. That is an all-out lie. Because there's a little truth in it. Actually, there's no truth in that. But anyway, these things sound believable, but they're not. It is something that Satan does. He comes up to you and he gives you this, this beautiful scenario that, that in our world today we're starting to believe well, there, there really is no God. Look at the science. Okay? How can Adam and Eve have been created, but the dinosaurs were never around when humans were around because they were here 30 billion years ago? Or something like that. I don't know how many years ago, but they were a long time back there. And then you got people saying, well, this is a young earth because if you count up the years of Adam and Eve were, you know, between Adam and, and Noah and Noah and. But evolution. You know what? I believe that evolution is feasible. Honestly, I do. Because if God said, you know what, I'm going to start with this little amoeba and I'm going to grow that rest. I'm going to culture it. I'm going to culture it until it becomes a human. Okay, I can see that. But somebody, somewhere, somehow, sometime had to create something, right? God had to create something to start culturing so if you want to believe in, a, in, in, in evolution, great. I'm with you. God evolved us. Of course, I've not seen the missing link between humans and monkeys yet. That's a little hard for me to swallow. But if God says that's the way we want to do it, we're going to do it. If God says, you know what, I'm going to create all these animals. Man, them dinosaurs look a little dangerous for people. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. Okay, now we're going to create Adam and Eve. Are we good now? Okay. God did all this. How did He do it? How did God create all of this? You know what? I have no idea. But the basis of our belief is faith. Remember that verse in Ephesians? For it's faith by, uh, it is by uh, grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. How did God do it? I don't know, but I have faith that He did do it. And the cool thing is, I ain't got to know. I do not have to know how God did it. So, why did he create all the animals in pairs and then create Adam and then get a rib and create woman? I don't know, but I don't care. That's what faith is. The whole basis of my belief is I ain't got to know everything. I just got to believe it. It's like math. Everybody knows I'm a math atheist, right? <laughs> It's like math. How do you get letters, numbers, add them up and somehow get a number? I don't know. Somebody smarter than me does it. I have not yet been able to count to X. But somebody can. So they do that. And they send people to the moon. By the way, I, I told Kirsten this, and I got in trouble. I said, you know, the moon, was it 1968, we sent somebody to the moon, we landed there, found out that it was not made of cheese, and we've never been back. PJ hit the veto button real quick. Boom. Do not tell her that. I don't know. 
But honestly, there's a little bit of truth in every lie. As we go up and we knock on doors and trick or treat, and we we'll open the doors, oh, you're a beautiful little pirate. Well, okay, that's fun. And I'm not saying, you know, encouraging a child is bad, but I'm waiting for some kid to go, you silly folks, I'm not a pirate, I'm a kid dressed up like one. I'm trying to get candy. My granddaughter once uh, dressed up as a hobo, carrying around a sign that said, we'll work for candy. I thought it was cute. But Satan, he masquerades, and his servants masquerade as, as, as servants of God. Christ caught him in this. Christ himself caught people masquerading as a servant of, of, of God, but were really working for Satan. Ch uh, John, chapter 8. We're in John, chapter 8, verse 42. John chapter 8, verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, my own, my own but he has sent me. This is why my language is not clear to you. I'm sorry, why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? I'm telling you the truth. Why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says, the reason you do not hear what <laughs> reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Now, Jesus himself calling out calling out some of the, the apostles of God. The, the, I think he was talking to the Pharisees, but he was talking to people saying, Look, you have no no basis of, of guilt against me. You cannot find sin. You're not listening to God. If you were listening to God, you would hear me. <clears throat> Why is the things today, all the, all the lies that, that we're living in, and, and even especially in our country, that, that we're believing junk that <laughs> is so ludicrous, it can't be real. Yet we believe it. But, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but that's all right. But same-sex marriage is, is fine. Okay, so all women need to marry women. All guys need to marry guys. And do we go against something that's talking about being fruitful and multiply? Because that don't happen. Um, we raise horses, and all of our mares are in one pasture. And our stallion is in the separate pasture. And you know what? None of those mares had a baby last year. Not a single one of them. I don't know how that happened. Just absolutely crazy. Because it's not natural. We're living a lie. And Satan is a perpetrator of this. If I can get you to where you're lying to each other and believing it, I can pull God out of school. I can pull God out of government. I can pull God out of people's lives. I can pull them out of the home. I can have your kids selling drugs before they're in their teens. I can have kids 10 years old in prison because they believe this junk that's on the street. If I can get the parents so busy trying to keep up with their neighbor 
and an accumulation of junk, then they won't pay attention to their kids. And I can take care of them kids because I will give them suggestive music. I will give them video games. I will give them television with suggestive through a flat out pornography. I mean, some of this stuff that is rated PG-13. I wish I let my 13 year old watch that gunk. Seriously. But it's the lies that, that Satan gives us. It's, it's what he gives us to believe and we're swallowing his junk. Why? Because we have neglected our first love. We have neglected our first love. God said, unless you can become like this little child, you have no place in the, in the kingdom of heaven. What does he mean by that? He means that I can take any of these children and present God to them and they will believe it. They will believe it with, without any doubt whatsoever. If you present it to them in a way they understand, because they know God. God is talking to them all the time. There's not all this junk in their heads to silence them. And they believe it in an instant. And then we grow up and see everything around us and all this, like these things that we think is wonderful and great and, and, and we got to have it. And Satan gets in. And he lies to us. And we believe it. We've neglected our first love. How about we get in the Bible? I've got, a, I've got a little thing on my Bible that comes up every morning and gives me a Bible verse. And so far, every time I've read that one verse, I'm thinking, man, I need to see what the rest of this says. This is pretty good. And I'll go to it and I'll read the rest of it. I'll read the con whole context of it. And it gets me in the Bible. It gets me studying this is what we need. I sit up here and I preach and I'll say, I'll, I'll give y'all three or four verses, five or six verses. That's not all of it. Don't take my word for it. Go home. Read what else it says. Read the whole context. And if I'm wrong, call me. Text me. Come back up here and hit me in the face and say, dude, you're wrong. That's not what it said. Okay, don't hit me in the face. But the gut's fine. So, honestly, look at it yourself. Don't take anyone's word for it. You know how many times I've heard people say, well, that's in the Bible. By golly, that is in the Bible. And I used to think, oh man, it's in the Bible. i got to look that up. I have searched and searched and searched. And I came back to them and said, where is it in the Bible? I don't know, but it's in there, by golly. No, it's not. It sounds good. But it's not there. How many of us today are here and have believed in this lie that Satan has gave us? That there's gray areas in truth and righteousness. Between sin and righteousness. There's a gray area between there. How many of us have been living in that gray area? How many of us know? I mean... I don't care if you're living in the darkness or if you're living in the gray area. You know what's truth. You know what is the truth. Because it makes you uncomfortable to hear it and still living like we are. How many of us are here and know that we're on the wrong path? Look, there's a simple way of getting on the right path. God allows you turns on this highway and trust me, they're safe. It's easy to have eternal life. It's easy to be a part of God's family. It's just a simple prayer. It's not, you can't buy it. You can't steal it. You can't work for it. It's given. It's a free gift. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you're here today and you need Christ's intervention, you want to be a part of His family, follow me. Lord, Lord, I've been living this lie. Satan has, has put in my life. And Lord, I know I'm wrong. Lord, I want to be part of your family. I want, to, I want to have your love surrounding me. I want you to, to guide me in the way of righteousness. Lord, I, I believe that Christ came into the world and he died on the cross for my sins. He was buried in three days, was arisen, and lives today. 
I know he's coming back and I want to be I want to be with him when he comes back, Lord. Lord, I ask these things in your son's holy name. Amen. That's a simple thing. That's a simple thing. 